Kia ora tātou, no mai, haere mai. Uh, it's fantastic to have you here with us this evening. Uh, we are here with uh, another um, town hall hui, um, with the Right Honourable um, Jan Tanidi. Kia ora, Jan. Kia ora. Um, we are also joined uh, by our sign language interpreters, um, Shosh and Rachel. And so we've got um, Shosh on the screen now, and you'll see Rachel uh, a little bit later. Uh, but today we are here uh, because tonight's topic is the unpacking of the literacy, communication and numeracy strategy. Uh, I'm about to um, take us through uh, a whakatauki for, um, for tonight's session and um, after that please feel free to uh, drop your name um, into the chat so we can get uh, an understanding of who we have with us today. And so the whakatauki for tonight um, is uh, uh, te toia te haumatia. Nothing can be achieved without a plan, workforce, and a way of doing things. And Jan, we thought this was uh, a hugely appropriate um, whakapoki, given, given that um, the strategy in broad terms has kind of signaled a direction, but actually there's, uh, there's an awful lot of work for us um, before we can realise the benefits from it. Uh, so um, Jan, um, I'll pass over to you uh, to, set, um, to set the scene around um, how the strategy came about. And then after that, um, we'll, be, we'll be moving through to some questions that we've had uh, people submit as they have registered. Um, there may be an opportunity towards the end of the session, depending on time, uh, to take some questions from the chat. Uh, but we are committed to making sure that we are wrapped up here by 7pm um, sharp. And so, um, Jan, there could be one or two people in the audience um, who don't know who you are. And so, um, very quickly, uh, I know travelling around the country that people really enjoy um, having somebody at the cabinet table uh, that has had that um, lived experience as not just a teacher, uh, but also um, a principal. And we're really proud that you've got your roots in NZI Tereoroa. And so um, I'll pass over to you uh, to share some thoughts around uh, where the strategies come from. Uh, kia ora, kia ora Liam and kia ora koutou, uh, nga mihi nui, kia koutou. Thank you for the opportunity to just have this brief time with you today. I find these really useful and particularly the questions that come through for them because it helps, uh, it helps shape where we're going and uh, what we want to do going forward from here. Uh, I will say too that I really hope that day two of term two for those of you who are school teachers or working in schools is going smoothly. Uh, I'm really keeping my fingers and toes crossed for you all that it's a more predictable school term because we haven't had one of those for quite some time. So like really, really going out there and hoping for the best for this school term. But also on that note, thank you for everything that you are doing and have done in our COVID response. I know that I'm very proud of the educationalists and the response that they have had towards um, COVID so far. Look. On the 22nd of March, we launched the new Literacy and Communication and Mathematics Strategy. And I think it's quite an exciting time. And if you haven't seen it so far, that's the document uh, that you're looking for in your school or it's also online. It came about because we know that international and both international and national uh, Testing um, surveys results showed that our literacy and mathematics results were dropping somewhat. And we also, not only that, we also had a very big cry from the sector that there was work to do in this area. And so the strategies as such have been developed in consultation with teachers, parents, expert academics and others that we have called upon and also a big literature review as well. Um, the reality is that our maths and literacy outcomes do need to change and we do need to look at what our young people need in the modern environment. And I'm going to say post-COVID, not that we're post-COVID yet, uh, but hopefully soon in that post-COVID environment, what is it that they need to go forward to succeed in their aims and goals for themselves and their lives? So we need to be giving them the best in education that they deserve. And I know that the one that you strive for every single day as well, because it's certainly something that drove me in the classroom and as a principal every single day. Um, but I do have to say that I wasn't, I wasn't always aware or didn't really have the knowledge at a high level of how we could get every single young person there. And so that's what drives me every day here in this role in the Beehive, 
uh, is around how can I be a, a better support to you and what you're doing to achieve those goals. So I think we've got some questions coming through on that, Liam. So I'll leave it there as just a brief overview of how we got to this point. Very cool. And um, I agree, uh, the questions that we've got here um, are quite widespread, and I think they'll give you the chance, um, give you a chance to unpack the strategy further. Um, personally, um, I was delighted um, to see that kind of broader focus on communications and particularly um, oral language. Um, it's so nice for us to be talking about something that's not just reading, writing uh, and numeracy. Uh, but the very first question that we've got here is, um, what do you see as the biggest shift between where we are now and where we're going to end up being as a result of the strategy? Yeah, I think that's a like, I've had a look at all your questions today and I think that they're all amazing questions and incredibly relevant. But I think that uh, particularly you've already highlighted there that we're talking about literacy and communication and that that emphasis on uh, oral language is incredibly important, which has been there, but I don't think that we've had as big an emphasis on it in the past as what we should have done. But I also think that this strategy is from early childhood right through and takes us into the tertiary area even, and that joining up between the different sectors, I think is really important. But it also gives us uh, the common practice model. It gives us a, a joined up approach in way of how we do things. And I just want to show from the middle here, I'm just gonna make sure that you can see that, um, but it's, it's really based on five focus areas and uh, all of the focus areas join up. I will say that there's nothing in here that will be a surprise to many of you, but the difference in, in this stage now is that in what we're doing and what we're working towards is that all the focus areas are interconnected. So you can't have one without the other. There's a realization that all five are exceptionally important in the development of a young person's literacy and communication skills or their mathematics skills. So just to very briefly go through that, the five expectations, the first one is clear expectations for teaching and learning, gu learning guide effective practice. Um, you know, again, clear expectations around that. And we see that through the re refresh of the curriculum uh, that we are in the process of doing at the moment, making certain that teachers know what to teach, when to teach it, how to teach it. And those things are really important. Uh, focus area two, capability supports along the career pathway, develop effective kayako and teachers who can meet the needs of diverse groups of learners. Making certain that teachers have the supports that they need, the right resourcing, the right PLD that sits alongside that, but also developing the leadership for literacy. And that's really important that comes into that particular focus area. So an acknowledgement of how important it is uh, in that leadership way. But that could also mean that there are new leadership roles. I'm not saying there will be, but there could be new leadership roles that come out of this as well. Focus area three is educationally powerful connections that support and enhance learning. Those connections are both within and outside of the educational institution. Focus area four, a system of learning supports responds to the needs of every learner. And that includes learning uh, our learning support, young people. So for example, develop evidence-based supports that recognize learner neurodiversity comes into that and really clear about that, that every young person is unique and we need to ensure that they are at the center of the learning at all times and the programs that we develop. And focus area five is system-wide evaluation supports a system that learns. And again, our looking at what our assessment tools are in there. You know, I get frustrated around the assessment quote at all that I'm constantly hearing that um, we don't know where our kids are at and we do know where our young people are at and where our learners are at but we need a better way of being able to show that and we need to help our the rest of the public understand that narrative around assessment. Mm -hmm. um, all of this is being built with the sector so all of this is a collaboration that will continue uh, forward of where we're heading to next. And very soon, I will be launching the action plans 
that go with this. So the action plans have been developed again with the sector and collaboration. And so you will see what this means going forward in the next short while. And are you able to give us um, a sneak peek around those um, action plans and the kind of time horizon? Like um, how long how long until the strategy is implemented? Yeah, so I want, it's really important to me because having come from the sector and I know that there's other questions around this too, that we're supportive of the sector and that we don't put a whole lot onto the sector that we're expecting tomorrow. Um, so basically the length of time of how it will take, long it will take to implement this strategy is over the next five years. Uh, we want to make sure that educators get the right professional development that they need to be able to implement it, but also to really deeply understand the strategy. Uh, you know, I don't know about you, Liam, but in my time in education, I know that there have been new initiatives that have been brought in. We've been expected to implement them basically within a month, and we're expected to know them at a deep level. And there's no way that you can understand that at a deep level. And so this is giving us the time to be able to do that, but also not to put too much expectation on the educators um, to make sure that that change is sustainable over time. I was just going to say that's the other thing that I know as a teacher. Sometimes you'd go along to a course and you'd come back the next day and you'd say, oh, I've learned this. And your kids would go, oh my goodness, here she goes again. She's just been to another course. Uh, and then my practice might change for a week, but I would very quickly go back to how I'd always taught. We don't want that. We want changes to be sustainable over time. And so that's why we don't expect this to be implemented in a short time frame. This is a long, in-depth process that we're going through. But it's exciting too. I look at it now and look at what's in front of us. And I'm really excited about it because I think I think we're going to crack it. In fact, I'm really confident we're going to crack it. Yeah, um, one of your opening comments that um, struck a chord uh, as I was reading through it is that there isn't anything in the document that's um, that's kind of brand new or I think is going to catch people off guard, uh, but it is um, aspiring to a, a much more um, connected and coherent uh, way that um, as educators we're approaching um, literacy communications and numeracy. Um, I will keep us going though. Um, next question is how will schools and teachers be supported to engage with the strategy and any changes that come out of it? Yeah, so there's going to be an great engagement strategy that will come out so that you will know what that's going to look like. Um, there's, there's still going to be a level of autonomy that will be provided to education settings about what that could look like for them too, around what will work for them best around the engagement. Um, we, we have a highly devolved system and that gives us lots of freedom and that's a good thing, uh, but that can also be challenging to meet as well. So we want to, um, we want to ensure that schools do have a common understanding of what the strategy looks like and what the action plans will look like going forward but meeting them in a way that, uh, meeting that engagement in a way that's right for them. So there will be a variety of different ways that we can do that. Uh, there'll be the online method, which we love so much, but there'll also be face-to-face. -face. There will be different opportunities for teachers to have that input. Um, but there will be, um, as I say, the actions arising and that will be achieved, like we will see a clear and coherent way forward uh, in this once the action plans come out. And as I say, that won't be that far away when people see the action plans. I will say, Liam, that um, when, this, when this document came out, I was really excited to hear the positive all that came with it, just like what you said, you know, bringing it all together. There wasn't a lot in it that made people think, oh, God, I've got to relearn how I do things now. Um, but it was bringing it all together. But... Um, teachers then said to me, what's next? So, you know, what, what does this mean? What's the next part of it? Because we want to get into this. It's not too long to wait before we actually let people know what the next part of it is. Uh, probably in the within the next couple of months, there will be the detailed strategy action plans will be delivered out. And so you will know exactly the opportunities, but there are going to be lots of opportunities, not just for the sector, 
but for experts in this field as well. Uh, also academics, private providers. Uh, we know that we've got a lot of expertise in the field. We want to utilise it all. And uh, that's actually quite good. Um, I've just seen in the chat that we've got um, a number of resource teachers uh, in there. Um, are you seeing that um, they'll be involved in the way that you've just been speaking about? Yeah, look, absolutely. And I will say that I think the um, resource teachers are doing an amazing job out in the, in the sector at the moment. And I see that they they have a huge wealth of expertise that we can leverage off in the this area and going forward and so really looking forward to engaging with them. I will say about the resource teachers of literacy, I know that many of them have been involved in the initial stages of the Better Start Literacy approach, uh, which we already have going and um, really looking forward to, to connecting with some of them about their experiences. I've had a conversation with a few, but I'd love to hear from a few more around their experiences of it. That, um, the ones that I've had have said that this is one of the best things that they've seen in their teaching career and that the, the shift that they are seeing and the system shift that they are seeing is just really heartening and so really happy to hear that feedback around that, um, that approach so looking forward to engaging a bit more as well. Um, I've never found uh, RTs uh, um, scared of sharing their voice and so the fact that you've, uh, you've gone and um, opened the door um, I suspect they'll take that opportunity. Uh, but um, I will keep us going. Um, it was something that you referenced earlier around the common practice model. Are you able to unpack a little bit more about what that's looking like um, yeah. and how it be developed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, the common practice model is being introduced to create a greater coherence and consistency in our teaching and assessment and learning practices for literacy and communication and maths right across the system. Um, it's going to be the, the common practice model itself will be uh, supported with clear and coherent evidence informed guidance. So a lot of this is going to have the guidance that comes with it. Uh, and elements of the common practice model will include um, clear and detailed progressions. So the literacy progressions, for example, and, the, and those progressions will be updated so that they are clear and a lot more detail that sits with them. Um, new teaching assessment and learning guides to help teachers use an evidence informed approaches to literacy and communication in maths and in their teaching. Now, when I say that, it could be that those assessment tools, as I've already indicated, are tools that we're already using, or with the um, experts, including people from the sector, we might decide and might see that there are new or better tools that or tweaks that could be made as well. I think there's, personally, I think a lot of the tools that we use now are just fantastic, but we've got to make certain of how we're using them and in mm -hmm. a common approach to them. Um, you know, we've all been in the situation where a young person has moved to schools and someone's done some form of assessment on them and the next school's really not certain the context of that assessment that was done with that young person. So the guides are really important. Um, the other thing, and I've already I've already said about this and alluded to this, but leadership guides and effective practice guides to support the use of the common practice model are really important. We used to have some really good ones that were in use, um, but not so common across the education system now. So up so updating and refreshing those guides to make certain that there's again that common understanding of the practice model. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be early learning supports as well and along with all of this the professional support and development to build the confidence and the understanding of our educators. So what I am going to say is that there is no set way of doing this just yet. So I think people think that we've got it and we're going to have some sort of hidden agenda that we bring out this common practice model and say, this is what you're going to teach. We don't have that because we want to develop it collaboratively in response from the feedback from the educators um, who have said to us that they do want more leadership and guidance and support. But we will be talking with uh, experts. We've got a raft of um, uh, evidence practice now that sits behind this and there's a, a lit 
uh, review that you can go along and, and find on the Ministry of Education's website around this to see the evidence that has um, has informed this so far. But there's still quite a bit of work to do to expert to use the expertise to collaboratively design, develop, and, and implement the strategic actions. If you can hear that, that's just the bells ringing, um, calling people to seven o'clock uh, in the in the house, not me, but it'll go off again and stop and then it will go off again. So just ignore that. Um, I'm just trying to think through what you've just shared um, from the view of the classroom teacher. It, is the idea that the that, that would be used um, to help inform to planning or is it something that would be much more day to day? Look, I think it's possibly a bit of both. I think there's elements of that that can be um, used in both of those areas. And I think that um, it will fit across everything that what a teacher understands that they need to be doing in the literacy and the mathematics area. And again, I don't, I think in some cases or in many cases, we'll be building on what teachers already know and educators already know and already do. So it's it's building on what um, the, their vast experience in this field and what they're, they're learning all the time, because that's something that I think that people forget is that our educators are constantly updating practice mm -hmm. as well. This will just be, it, again, it's that common, it's the principles, let's say this, it's the principles that underpin will be the common part to this, yeah. Okay, um, it's just come up um, in the chat as well, but we've got um, a question here around uh, expectations around um, initial teacher education, and um, it was delightful to read a strategy that actually forefronts um, initial teacher education and PLD. But can you talk um, a little bit about what support will be given to IT providers and new graduates um, to support them in introducing the strategy? Yeah, so this is really important. And I, there's not a place that I don't go to around the country where they say to me, if we could have our teachers coming out knowing this, um, that would be that would solve a lot of our issues and also even on Sunday when we announced some of our work around the engagement strategy. Uh, that's coming out too. Um, when we announced some initiatives around that, there was a principal who said, I'm so excited about this. I'm really excited about what you're doing. But what about our teachers knowing this when they're coming out? So we we get that. We get that there is a real desire and a need because I've been there too. Uh, we're working through that at the moment. So we know that the teaching standards ensure that the quality of our workforce and ITE and schools ensure that teachers will meet those standards. Uh, but we're looking at how we can support brand new graduates in this area specifically to understand the work that we're going because they may have missed that, but also to work the work that's needed with the ITE providers to bring them up to standards so that they ensure that there are people who are going through those courses and, and graduating as teachers have this knowledge deeply embedded by the time that they come through. So we haven't quite got the answer yet because ITE actually fits into Minister Hipkins' area, but we are having those conversations. Like there's, there's a lot of crossover between our areas. And so we meet regularly to have these conversations. And I'd have to say that I'm quite, I can't give you the answer yet, but I'm quite excited about where we're heading in this area because I think you're all going to be excited when you, when you kind of get an idea about some of the changes we want to see. Uh, I've got a hundred questions, but I'll stick to the ones in front of me. Um, um, and I've also got my um, eye on the time. Um, hopefully we can get through two more questions. Uh, and you touched on it before, that connection between um, early childhood education and uh, the schooling sector. How do you see the school entry kitty relating and supporting the new strategy? Look, I think that this is really important. I think that what a young person brings into the learning situation when they start school for the first time is crucial that we understand the strengths that they bring. And it's more than just having a, a test and, and running a raft of tests on a young person, because I automatically think that when we do that, and that's all that we do, we go to a deficit model straight away. And I think we need to celebrate the strengths that a young person comes from and what they, they bring with them. And so one of the 
areas that I've been really strong about is the connection and the understanding between early childhood and school and uh, and school at home and school. And so the the wealth is in and we I haven't we haven't got it completely captured, but we understand that uh, what they're bringing through from their early childhood and what the early childhood teacher knows is one of the most important parts about understanding the strengths when that young person uh, starts school. And that gives us that coherence of the transition. So a coherent transition is incredibly important. I'm really hot on this because I know where it can fall down. Um, you know, so those are the questions that I ask officials constantly is about where the voice of the early childhood teacher is in this. And I know, Liam, you will be aware that I've spoken to some of your team about this as well and making sure that their voices are being heard in our curriculum voices group as well and in that work around the school entry pitta because I think that, um, that to me that's far more powerful knowing what the early childhood teacher knows about that young person than putting a raft of tests in front of the young person. Yeah, and you're not wrong around how interconnected all of this is. In a lot of ways, it's quite tough just to talk about the strategy um, in isolation. Um, this next question was just far too creative for us not uh, to be able to um, show. And so uh, we're going to put it up on screen because I couldn't bring myself to even read it. Um, given this was uh, a numeracy strategy, uh, I'll give people in the audience a chance to read it. And then if you could um, solve that equation for us, please, Jen. Look, I love this question. Whoever wrote this question, congratulations and well done. You are exactly the person that we need teaching our young people because we need creativity in a major way. So thank you um, for making my day. But on a serious note, I also get exactly where you're coming from. There is so much that we are putting on you and there is so much that you are experiencing at the moment with the pandemic. And as I front footed and said, I totally understand where you're coming from, which is why um, when we were looking at the refresh of the national curriculum, we looked at those timelines and we reset it to make it a bit more realistic. At all times, um, I expect that we will be working with the sector over this. Uh, as I said, we're pleased, I'm not really generally pleased that people have been positive about the direction of the changes. So I, people have come up and said to me, this is exactly what we've needed for quite some time. But um, it's really important that, that you are at the centre of these changes as educators and that we are supporting you. And so I've asked uh, our curriculum centre, Te Potahu, to make sure that the overview that they have, that they are also working with the curriculum voices group to understand exactly what support is needed. I, the whole way through this, I've said that my, right from the word go, that the most important part of this for me is the implementation, implementation, implementation. And to get our implementation right, we may, need to make sure that we're giving the sector all of the supports that they need. Um, and that the communication that's coming from the centre is clear and timely, uh, and that we can adapt approaches and or timeframes when there is a need. And I think we're already showing that, that we can adapt those timeframes. So we're not set on something that, as I said, that we have to have done tomorrow. We are looking at the fact that how can we be re a really big support to you in this change as well. Jim, um, block your ears for this next part because I'm just going to do um, a quick little plug for our upcoming campaigns. Um, we do have uh, a link to the website going into the chat now uh, for our campaign, Wawahi Taha uh, and our um, principals campaign, um, Kiao Kei Tua, because uh, I think in what our aspirations are for the next round of collective agreements are all about how we make sure that the sector is staffed uh, around having the right people, uh, the right structures to support the well-being of educators, uh, as well as um, valuing them for the job that they do. Uh, it's the interconnectedness of the uh, direction that the strategy is talking about, but also making sure that we've got the people and the resources to be able to, to do it justice. Uh, and so um, those people in the chat, if you can click on that link, 
Um, we've got paid union meetings coming up um, towards the end of this term, uh, but the link itself will take you through to the uh, launch video. It's well worth a watch, um, and so please do that. Um, Jan, I'm going to wrap us up here because um, it is 7 o'clock. Um, in the couple of minutes that we do have left, um, if people in the chat could also uh, drop in ideas for other topics for town hall meetings. Um, Jan, you've been incredibly generous with your time, and I know you value this opportunity to talk directly to uh, directly to, um, to educators, and so uh, thank you very much for making yourself available uh, again, and um, uh, thank you to Rachel and uh, Shosh for the support that you've given us this evening, um, to our NZDI team in the background for making this a very slick production, and we'll just close off with karakia. Uh, kia tau te rangi marie, o te rangi nui, o ta ihu nei, o papatuanuku e tātoko nei, uh, e te ao a afi nei, ki runga i a tātou, tihei mauri ora. Ka kite anō. Ka kite. <laughs>